Andrew and John Usher created the Usher's whiskey brand in the 1860s or 1870s. And these were the very Ushers of Glenlivet fame, as I'm sure you'll remember from episode 13. They owned uh, Edinburgh Distillery, they had partial ownership of Royal Brockla Distillery, of North British Distillery, and they also had a uh, contract with the Smiths of Glenlivet Distillery. After the brothers passed away, the company was purchased by Distillers Company Limited in 1919. Today, Distillers Company Limited is known as Diageo. Usher's Green Stripe was always produced without an age statement. Usher's had more luxurious uh, expressions like extra liqueur and deluxe, which both had 12-year-old age statements. The bottles had cork tops right up until the 70s when the company switched over to the middle twist-off caps. We have here is Peter Dawson Old Curio 12-year-old blended scotch whiskey. And yes, Peter Dawson was a real guy. He owned uh, parts of Ochnicki Distillery, Toymore Distillery, Balmenach Distillery, and Convilmore Distillery at, at various times. Now, the Peter Dawson brand was registered in 1915 and then was purchased in 1924 by Distillers Company Limited, who is today known as, yes, Diageo. The blend uh, appears to have been created largely for export markets, such as the United States, France, uh, Italy, and Japan. Uh, there was Old Curio, there was Special, there was Rare Reserve, as the various expressions. Sometimes they were bottled with no age statement, sometimes they had 12 year old age statement, sometimes they had a 20 year old age statement. Peter Dawson bottles came with spring tops or cork tops right up through the 1950s um, and then switched either the 1960s or 1970s to the metal twist off cap. Let's start with Usher's Green Stripe. As seen here, the alcohol by volume is measured in proof, which sets this before 1990. The liquid volume is measured in pints, not milliliters, which sets this 1979 or earlier. But what's the most helpful part of this bottle is the state of Wisconsin liquor tax stamp. This particular tax stamp with its orange, green, black, and white coloring, with its code that begins with a number rather than a letter, and the two ounces or less notation places this bottle 1960 or later. In 1962, the font for two ounces changed and almost doubled in size. So this state of Wisconsin liquor tax stamp comes from before 1962. So the tax stamp is from either 1960 or 1961. And I'm gonna play it conservative and say it's from 1961. This Peter Dawson Old Curio 12 year old whiskey throws us a curveball. The bottle actually has two different tax stamps. There's a 1947 additional liquor tax stamp which is what it sounds like. It was a tax that was added in addition to the regular tax on alcohol. This is the bottle's original tax stamp with its one and nine sixteenths tax, the arrangement of colors and serial number style. This tax stamp is from 1939. By 1940, the colors on the tax stamp had changed as did the serial number color. So even though this has a tax stamp from 1947, it is an additional tax stamp. Because the original tax stamp is from 1939, this whiskey was bottled in 1939. Ushers, Green Stripe, bottled in 1961. There was not much left of that cork. Peter Dawson, Old Curio 12 year old, bottled in 1939. Once again, broken cap. This is soft as butter. Not gonna use this, I'm gonna use this. That cork was almost liquid. Usher's Green Stripe. It smells like the ocean. A combination of lime and peat moss. It has a significant amount of peat 
and I don't mean smoke, I mean really this organic mossiness. Paris guava and grapefruit. I think it's beautiful. Peter Dawson. Shoe leather. Machinery. Like a machine shop. Definitely a vanilla and caramel note, but it's a really rich caramel. It's a really rich vanilla without just being generic barrel char. Raisins and toffee in there, as well as brown sugar. This one feels more cask driven than this one. Maybe because it's older, getting more influence from the oak. Cheers. Tart citrus, a bit of herbal bitterness, kind of a slight savory mushroom note. It's still fine, even though the fill level was questionable, it's totally drinkable, no soap, no weird funky notes. It really reads as a mineral, citric, herbal spirit. There's actually a little bit of smoked fish going on in the finish. It's a pre-war whiskey. Shoe polish. Definitely a lot of old bottle stuff going on. Musty basement. I'd say a little bit of cork. Glass. There's still plenty of heat to it. It's very drying. It's nowhere near as sweet as the nose leads on. Industrial grease, diesel exhaust, black licorice, burlap, and chili oil. To conclude, with Green Stripe, one feels like one's getting a lot of spirit, but good spirit, with the citrus and the peat moss and the salt. I enjoy it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. In fact, I think I like this one better than this one. But over here, to Peter Dawson, 12-year-old old curio, um, there's a lot of cask influence on the nose, which is surprising and kind of modern, but one doesn't really get it that much on the palate. This is a little difficult, not because the whiskey was difficult 79 years ago when it was bottled, but because it was sitting in a bottle for 79 years with oxidation, contact with the glass and the cork for extended period of time, the low fill level. One question does linger in the back of my mind, and that is, am I getting poisoned by drinking this Peter Dawson? Papa. Sounds like my time is up. The Usher's uh, brand remained with the family until 1919 because the brothers were dead as sh I should just I should just drink before I do this because doing this sober I cannot nail this.